Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, let me explain SR flip-flop. SR flip-flop is a kind of flip-flop we will be having an input like S and R. And clock is the another input we are going to provide for any sequential circuit. And here the output outputs are Q and Q bar. These two outputs are complementary to each other. If Q becomes 0, Q bar should be 1. So let us understand the working of SR flip-flop with the circuit diagram. In this circuit, SR flip-flop is designed using NAND gates. The four NAND gates are connected in this way to get Q and Q bar output by providing S, clock and R to the gate inputs. So if you look at the truth table here, when the positive edge of the clock is given as input, the SR flip-flop is going to respond and produce the output. When the two inputs are 0 and 0, in the first case, you can observe when the SR flip-flop will be having 0, 0, output is Q and Q bar. Means the output will be previous state or we say no change in the value of the output. Q will be holding its state as Q and Q bar will be holding its state as Q bar. So we say previous state will be the output even S and R are 0, 0. When S and R becomes 1, 0. S is 1 and R is 0, Q is 1 and Q bar is 0. When S is equal to 0 and R is equal to 1, Q is equal to 0 and R, so Q bar is 1. When S and R becomes 1, 1, both the inputs are 1, 1, this flip-flop will not provide a stable output, it is Z, means we say it is an intermediate state. Now let us understand how actually the flip-flop is going to work by taking the cases one by one. In the first case, S is 0 and R is 0. So to understand this particular case, we need to have a look at how the NAND gate is going to behave. The NAND gate output will be 0, 0 inputs, output is 1, for 0, 1 output is 1, for 1, 0 output is 1, and 1, 1 output is 0. If you know the truth table of the NAND gate, easily we can understand this SR flip-flop working. So case 1 S0 and R0, if we provide 0 and 0 over here, we know that clock will be 1. Means we are operating this flip-flop with positive edge of the clock. So I am treating clock is 1. And we need to assume the previous stages of Q and Q bar. Since it is a sequential circuit, the output will be depending on the previous outputs also. That's why I am assuming Q is equal to 0 and Q bar is equal to 1 previously. By taking these values into account, now we need to analyze each and every gate output. So S is equal to 0 and clock is equal to 1 to this particular gate, it produces 1 as output. And the gate 2, similarly R is 0 and clock is 1, again it produces 1 as output. Now we need to look at gate 3. Gate 3 will be taking the value coming from the gate 1 as well as Q bar. So previously Q bar is 1 we have assumed. So 1 is the input here and the another input coming from gate 1 is also 1. For 1, 1 we are going to get 0 as output that's why Q is 0. Similarly gate 4 is giving Q bar by taking this Q newly generated value as 0 and 0 and 1 to the gate Q bar becomes 1. So Q bar will be 1 and Q is equal to 0. If you observe the previous value we have assumed for Q and Q bar is 0 and 1. Now also after applying 0, 0 input, we are getting the same values. That's why we say in this case, Q and Q bar are holding its state, are no change, or we say Q will be same as Q and Q bar will be same as Q bar. Then case 2. In case 2, let us take S value is 1 and R value is 0. And previously we know that Q and Q bar are 0 and 1, we have derived that. So gate 1 gives 0 output, gate 2 for R is equal to 0 and clock is equal to 1, it gives 1 and gate 3, Q bar is previously 1, we need to take this value into account and G1 is 0, so Q becomes 1, this Q is generated as 1 and gate 4 generates Q bar by taking this 1 into account as input here. And 1, 1 are the inputs for gate 4. Gate 4 gives the output as 0. 
so in this case for 1 0 input output will be q is 1 and q bar is 0 so we say when s is equal to 1 flip flop is going to set its state set in the sense it is 1 at the q uh, let us understand case 3 when s is equal to 0 and r is equal to 1 so previously we have q is 1 and q bar is 0 from the previous case now when these two are the inputs applied s is equal to 0 clock is 1 g1 becomes 1 g1 output is 1 when r is 1 and clock is 1 g2 output is 0 now we need to take the gate 4 into account for a better understanding so here q is previously q is 1 so here we will be having an input 1 in this stage so 1 and 0 it is going to provide the output as 1 q bar becomes 1 now we need to consider this output over here as input for g3 so output q becomes 0 so now we can say in this case the output will be 0 and 1 so here r is taken as when 1 when r is equal to 1 the output of the flip flop will be 0 means r is equal to 1 output will be reset to 0 so let us understand case 4 in case 4 s is equal to 1 and r is equal to 1 so these two are 1 as well as 1 now q and q bar previously 0 and 1 so gate 1 gives for 1 1 input the output will be 0 so here it is 0 and then the second gate gives for 1 1 input again the output of the second gate will be 0 the third gate will be having an input q bar previously it is 1 and now g1 is giving 0 so output will be 1 let us assume this as 1 so in gate 4 again the inputs are q is equal to 0 and g2 is giving 1 so output again here also it is 1 so initially i told sr flip flop is a sequential circuit where q and q bar are the outputs q should be complementary to q bar and q bar should be complementary to q but here in this case both the outputs are trying to attain one but this this condition not satisfies so q and q bar will be intermediate state means both are not supposed to be one they are trying to attain one that's why we are going to say this state is high impedance or we say it is intermediate state so we are going to represent that with z.